Hello everyone and welcome back for another video. Today I'm going to go over how to water our St. Augustine lawn. Spring is here and summer is right around the corner. Here in Florida it's already getting to be in the mid 80s so I need to get on this right now. This is an entire watering program. Now we are going to do the tuna can challenge, don't worry about that, there's some steps to take before that. Doing these steps can potentially save you thousands and thousands of gallons of water and a lot of time, money, and frustration. I found that it takes about 1200 gallons of water to add half an inch of water to a 4000 square foot lawn. Alright, so the first item on our list is to use this tool. It helps clear out the sprinkler heads and the stolons that may have grown over the sprinkler. We have these runners that can grow over the sprinklers and not allow them to fully pop up. Now if they don't pop up, we're not gonna get good water coverage. And make sure you get the larger one. This one is seven inches across and it has these little teeth to help cut through the stolons. We just put it around the head and give it a good turn and it cuts through the stolons and gives us a clean area around the sprinkler head. Clear out the little pieces and parts and we're done. Up next is we wanna make sure that our sprinkler heads are level with the ground. The sprinklers are calibrated to be level. So if it's below the ground, maybe one, two or three inches, we're not gonna get good water coverage when the head pops up. You can get these risers or extensions that screw on the bottom of the sprinkler housing. I made a video about this and I'll leave it right here. Now this only takes a couple of minutes to do. And remember, the top of the sprinkler head should be level with the ground. Raise it up if it needs it. Next on our list is to check the filters. These can get clogged up with gunk, sludge from inside the pipes, and tiny bits of algae. We unscrew the head and take out the filter. The holes are pretty small, so it really doesn't take a lot to clog them up. If these get clogged up and we have reduced water, what we would normally do would be to increase the watering time, when in reality, it's as simple as a clogged filter. If the filters are clogged up and we increase the watering time, well, now we're just wasting water and money. We get brown spots and think the area is not getting watered, so we increase the watering time but that doesn't work. Now we start to dig for grubs, chinch bugs. We think we have uh, fungus and disease, and we spend tons of money on chemicals when we don't need to. So let's make sure our filters are clean. Clean them out, or you can simply replace them. I made a video about that, and I'll leave that right here. Now these filters should be checked once per year, and spring is the perfect time to clean your filters. And now it's time for the nozzle. We can see this one has a hole where the water comes out and these little marks show us the spray. The spray should be level with the structure like this. If it's off or twisted a bit, we're not gonna get full water coverage. And this little screw in the middle, well this allows for the spray distance or the radius. Turn it clockwise to shorten the radius and counterclockwise to increase it or to get the nozzle to spray further. We can see the marks are lined up with the wall. Now another area to consider is to make sure that we have the right nozzle for the application. This part of my yard is about 21 feet from the house to the fence, so I have the right nozzle for the job. This is a 12 foot radius and I have these on both sides of the yard. We can get them in 8, 10, 12 feet or really whatever you need. In this way, I can get the best coverage because of the overlap. Now on the other side, this area is about eight feet from the house to the fence. I wouldn't put a 12 footer on this side, so I have an eight foot nozzle. This way my grass gets properly watered without wasting anything. So here we are at our system and we're gonna talk about our run time and our watering days. Right now I'm watering twice per week, Monday and Friday, as you can see in these little droplets right here. Within about a month, maybe four or five weeks or so, I'm going to be bumping this up uh, to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm going to be watering three times per week. But right now, what I'm doing is watering Monday and Friday. So I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off, and then Friday. What we're looking for is something that's called watering infrequently and long. Because each one of these times, I'm putting down half an inch per application. We want to have a little spread right here. This is why I have this off Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then I'm watering Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What we really want to try to avoid is to water Monday, Tuesday, and then have a long stretch off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's why it's called watering infrequently and longer. These are my run times for each station. So station one is 40, and then station two is 40, three is 40, and then for the little bubblers out there, like for the trees and shrubs, I have it at 25 minutes. All right, so we have our filters cleaned out, our heads are level, and the nozzles are all squared. The stolons are removed. Now it's time for the tuna can challenge, which is just a cool way of saying we're going to measure the amount of water we put down 
on our grass. Our goal is to put down half an inch of water per application. You don't really need an empty tuna can. You can use a cereal bowl, condiment bowl, leftover food container, really anything like this is gonna work. We put them down around the yard. We do one here and one there, try to go everywhere. And remember to get near the house as well. Now it's time to run our irrigation system for maybe let's say 30 minutes. Then we're gonna measure the water. Now if it's not at half an inch, bump up the time by about five minutes and then measure the water again. Now keep doing this, making small adjustments until you put down half an inch of water. And last, I wanna show you this. There's a hidden filter in here. I believe it's for the entire system or it could be for the drip system for the plants. Either way, here it is, under the cap. We unscrew the cap and remove the filter like this. Now this thing gets clogged up pretty fast, so I check mine about once every other month. If it needs to be clean, an old toothbrush works well. Screw it back in, and put the lid on. And there you go, folks. If you follow these easy steps, your lawn should get a really good water coverage throughout the spring, summer, and fall. Thanks for watching.